high wind warning. Oh, I guess it's getting pretty bad out there. Uh, no! I was in the middle of that show. I'm more concerned about the animals. I may need to go help Paul with the generator. You know, this wouldn't happen so often if we just made our own energy here. What do you mean, make our own energy? I'm talking about distributed renewable energy. But hold on. Before we get into that, do you understand where our electricity comes from now? Um, kind of. Actually, maybe not. That's okay. For a long time, I didn't either. Right now, most Americans depend on large-scale centralized energy generation. Big power plants are located far away from consumers, so the electricity generated there has to travel through a network of high-voltage power lines, then go through a substation before it reaches our farm. But there are some real problems with this type of system. For one, centralized generation means a small number of utility companies hold a lot of power, literally, but also economically and politically. These utilities control every aspect of production, from how our electricity is generated to how it's distributed and sold. Often, these companies prioritize profits over people, and they spend a lot of those profits lobbying our government. Last year, Electric Utilities spent over $100 million on lobbying alone. They watered down clean energy initiatives, create loopholes to protect their profit margins, and push legislation that limits our ability to achieve energy independence. The result is soaring utility costs, not to mention an electric grid that relies heavily on fossil fuels. In fact, in 2020, a majority of our electricity was generated by gas and coal. Oh yeah, like that fracking project the next town over. Exactly. But that's not the only problem. Severe weather is the leading cause of major power outages across the United States. Thanks to climate change, we're seeing stronger, more frequent storms and more extreme weather across the country. The baseline for normal weather patterns is changing, but it's not just impacting the energy sector. As farmers, unpredictable weather patterns like extreme heat, drought, and flooding make our jobs even harder. Remember when our farm flooded? So climate change is why our crops keep getting ruined. I hope that doesn't happen tonight. And it's not just us. The whole industry is struggling. Farm and ranch families are facing a mass extinction in the U.S. More than half of all farmers have lost money every year since 2013, and farm debt is higher than ever. But I've been doing some research, and I think what I found can solve a lot of our problems. Remember how I said we could make our own energy? Go on. I was talking about distributed renewable energy, like wind and solar. If we transition some of our farm to producing our own energy, we can sell that energy as a cash crop, just like we sell our corn and soybeans. These resources can be harvested forever, providing us with a long-term, reliable source of income. Plus, we can provide clean, local power for our whole community. So, do all farmers need to start harvesting energy? We should at least consider it. Farmers are perfectly positioned to transform the energy sector, but we're not the only ones who can get involved. Community centers, places of worship, and residential rooftops are also great locations to install solar panels or wind turbines. If we join together as a community, we can invest in distributed energy that complements our business and generates clean power for everyone. No more relying on the big power plant. We can generate and store our energy locally. And we're on the right track. To date, 16 states have implemented policies that encourage growth of distributed renewable energy. We can ask our representatives to implement those policies here, too. So, how do we get started? Well, first we need to convince Ma and Pa. In the meantime, I need to go help Pa prep the farm for this storm. <laughs> <laughs>